Hey. Oh, yeah. what's that? I swing to the bubbles. It makes bubbles? Show me. Show me it in the water. Ooh. That's a lot of bubbles. What's that? They like being in the water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's an alligator. That it's a what? I think it's an alligator. An alligator? Yeah, yeah. you know the dough there, like this. Uh huh. Hi everybody, this is Beth again with Something Better and I just thought I would give you a quick update in my garden that I've got. So you can see the the hole there, the, uh, the fill pipe in the back. And this has got two tomatoes together with these little wire trellises. And then this is, this is a little plant that I haven't put in here yet, but this is called, this is called a toothache plant. And this is some seed that I got from Baker Creek. And I'm really excited to grow this this year. It's the first time I've tried growing it. I've heard that the leaves are really good in a salad. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'll report back and see if that turns out to be true. So let me see. Can you see behind me? So these guys here are um, some towers, some planting pot towers that stack together. Let me get out of the sun. Show you over here. Aha, this, this looks like this. Okay, so these things behind me are um, some stacking planters that I got from Aldi, and they were a really good deal for a set of three, and you can put three of them together, make a, a tower of six. And so I've got some strawberries and uh, beans. They're doing pretty good. The strawberries aren't doing as well as I thought they would, but that's okay, this is all an experiment. That's what I say to make myself feel better about anything that doesn't go well. Is, it's an experiment, right? <laughs> so, um, down here, we have just a little bit along the fence. You can see that. I use those handy blocks here, you can see. So you just put like a two by six in there to make the sides. That way you don't have to use any tools. And I am not afraid of using tools. I love using power tools, but these were just so quick and easy that I couldn't resist. And actually you can see on the other side of the fence, this is what we call no man's land. This is the utility easement on the back side of our property. And I've got some bags of soil in there because I'm planning on doing something very similar just along the edge on the other side of the fence so that I can grow back brassicas, you know, cabbages and broccolis and things for fall, and that's what I'm gonna do back there. So it's a little project in the works. Okay, on the other side here, you can see the decorative corn that I've got going on. This is my first year growing glass gem corn, and this is seed that I got from um, Melissa, I think it's Melissa Sousa, and she was, it was when she was living in Washington before they moved over to um, Northern Idaho, and I've been, following them in their journey of building their homestead over there and um, it's been very exciting so but the corn I'm really excited about growing and we'll see how that goes in the fall so over here we have our beautiful tomatillos so these have gotten really big they've been attacked by bugs but they've powered through and they're still producing like crazy They've got a lot of flowers, a lot of, um, over on the other side actually, you can see the fruit better. So here's these guys. So they're still, they're not full yet, they're still green. And um, when the fruit grows inside, they'll become more full. They'll fill up the entire paper and the husk will get dried out and, and split and then you'll see the fruit is ready. And then we'll be making some salsa verde and it'll be delicious. Okay, so here's another wicking container with three of the art colors mixed tomatoes in the same container. You can see some, some tomatoes are going there. 
And I've got another one of those toothache plants to put in this pot. So these are looking really healthy and happy. I can't wait to get some tomatoes off of these. This is my potato experiment and this is this is disappointing. I don't know if it's actually gonna produce any potatoes, but I tried, right? It's all an experiment, right? So it's pretty much just got one little plant left. Everything else just kind of fell over and died. I don't know if I watered it too much. It seems so dry, but I guess once I put my finger down there, it is pretty moist. So, but we did get some big rains and I think that had something to do with it. So this over here is my beautiful ground cherry. I'm gonna show you a little clip from earlier where we were snacking on these. Charles and I were snacking on these in the, in the garden. What do you got? What do you have? What is it? It's a berry. A berry? <laughs> do you know what it's called? Mm-hmm. It's a kid. It's a ground cherry. Yeah, it's a ground chair. I'm gonna open one for you. For me? Thank yep. you. No, eat, eat it. I'll take it. Uh uh, it's stuck. It doesn't want to look out. Ah, there. Yep, there. That one looks eat pretty it. good. Thank you. Eat Are it. you gonna have another one? Yeah. Mmm. This one's green. That one's still green? It probably could have gotten a little bit riper. Is it still good though? Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's kind of fun having, I don't make a, having I a snack don't in the garden. I don't do and eat for it. Okay. Eat it. Oh for me? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> two left. There's two left. For uh, you and me? Yep. One for each this? of us. One for me. Okay. And that one's gonna be for you. Mmm. Mmm. I done this one over. We don't have another one. Yeah, I think we have to wait until tomorrow, and then uh -oh. tomorrow there might be more ripe ones. Nah, I don't. No, they're not ready yet. Hey, come back here. <laughs> And you can see these ones over here are not ripe yet, so they're green. But down here, you can see that as they ripen, they start to turn brown. And the just like the tomatillo, the husk will uh, dry up. And that's when you know, well actually, what, what really shows that it's dry, or what really shows that it's ripe is when the husk falls to the ground. Now these were helped by Charles, but if these were brown and papery and fall into the ground, then you would know that they were ripe. <laughs> so, for what it's worth. Oh, sunflower. <laughs> Aren't you cheerful? And look at this pole bean. It's taken off from its pole and it's going up onto the trellis. Like, I'm out of here. I've got other places to go. There's another one. Escaping. <laughs> okay, so another thing that I wanted to show you is the little experiment that I'm doing over here. And this is my zucchini and yellow squash. So my zucchini's over here. One of them is just laying across the ground. And one of them I am starting to stake up um, tie up on this steak. So I wanted to train it on a steak to see if I could get, you know, get it to go uh, straight up and see if that would help with airflow and productivity. So we'll see how those are doing. This is a yellow squash, which again, this one is doing pretty good, but it's going straight across the ground. Whereas this one, I, well, and I need to come out and tie it up a little bit more, but you get the idea. It's, it's we're going to be tying it up the steak and I've been pruning all of the lower leaves. Um, anything that's lower than the fruit that's being set, I, I trim off. And so that's because I'd, I'd heard that with zucchini and uh, yellow squash that the only leaves that actually contribute to the health and development of the fruit are the ones that are at the level of the fruit or above it. So I've been just pruning those off, the, the lower ones, because they can just be a vector for disease and mildew and stuff like that and 
if the plant really doesn't need it, then I don't need it either. Now this is a blueberry that I just planted um, this season and it's not doing very well. I'm not sure if it's just because of the heat that we've had. Um, this is in another one of these uh, wicking buckets containers and this is about 25 gallons. So it's not that it's not getting enough water, it's just I don't know what's going on with it. If anybody has any ideas, let me know because I really want to save this blueberry bush and get some more in the future, but this one's not doing very well. But what is doing well is this. This is a dwarf er ever-bearing mulberry that I got from Baker Creek this year, and it's doing really well. There's several, I think there's three plants in there, maybe more, and uh, I really love mulberries and I'm looking forward to, to seeing how that does. So here we have some lemon cucumbers and yellow pear tomatoes in the same container. And these I'm going to just let trail down onto the ground or do whatever they want. Freedom for the cucumbers. Can you see? Ah. So this is my, my first trellis. So let me show you the top of it. Can you see? It's rather narrow compared to the other trellises because I wanted it to have a high peak at the top to tie the, the strings so that I could string train the tomatoes in here. So this is um, one kettle panel that is bent into one of my raised beds. And so it's quite tall, quite narrow, but it's sturdy and it's doing the trick. So let me show you the tomatoes that are growing in here. So all along the center of this garden bed are tomatoes and they're just about a foot or so apart. And you can see that all of the lower branches and suckers have been trimmed off to give it airflow since I have them um, growing so, so close together and so intensely planted. I wanted to make sure that there was as much airflow down here as possible to, um, to avoid fungal issues and diseases and such. So this first one that we have is Brad's Atomic Grape, the famous tomato. There's lots of clusters growing on here. And this lower cluster is the first one that's going to be coming ripe. It's already doing the purple shoulders and the stripes. Um, and you can see where the sun hits it, it's darker, and then underneath it's, it's the lighter green. And that's normal for any of the, um, the darker tomatoes. And when that starts streaking red in there with the blue and the green, then I'll know it's, it's coming ripe. The next one that we have has most of its fruit over on this side. This is uh, Matt's Wild Cherry. So these clusters are looking pretty good. None of them are starting to blush yet. But it's just a matter of time. Let's come around. So I did take down all of the clusters, or the, the suckers from these plants. But as we got higher up the plants, then I started to let some of the suckers go. And you can see that this plant, the Matt's Wild Cherry, really decided to take off with the suckers. <laughs> it's got like whole plants worth of other suckers that are just actually crowding out my atomic grape. But I mean, it's kind of being bossy and I'm gonna let it. So that's the uh, wild cherry here and it's the tallest one I have. These were all planted about the same size or at the same time and the Matt's wild cherry is the tallest one. So the next one that I have over here is, let me get you inside the cage. This is the blue cream berries. And Charles has been in here. These are the ones, the first ones that I've had coming um, ripe. And you can see that these are beautiful. They've got the purple shoulders and the creamy green bottoms. You can tell that they're ripe when the, the, when the bottoms become translucent and yellowish. They're really tasty. Okay, the next one that I can see fruit on this side of the trellis is the yellow pear. And none of these have blushed yet, so they're all still very green. But we are watching this carefully to see when we get the first yellow pear tomatoes. The next one that I have, and I'm going to put you in here again, is the San Marzano. And this is the only one of this variety that I've got growing. I sold the rest of them. They were very popular 
plant in my plant sale. So this is one of the shortest ones that I have. Actually, it is the shortest one I have in this bed. And But it, it doesn't look at all unhealthy. It looks like an extremely healthy plant. It's just shorter. That's okay. We love it anyway. And the last one, this is a little bit sickly looking. But this is a Amish paste that I put in kind of as an afterthought because it was a sad looking plant that I wanted to rehabilitate. Does anybody else do that? Um, but it already had fruit on it. And I, I just really wanted to get it out of its pot. And I had this spot at the end of the bed here and I decided to just put it in and see what happened. And it seems to be doing okay, it's recovering. And then on this side of the bed is all these cucumbers. So these cucumbers are coming up this side of the trellis. And I'm excited about those because I want to make pickles. And on this side, actually, while we can still see, get through the cucumbers, you can see this Amish paste tomato. Can you see it? It's huge. I'm so excited about this tomato. So this is the biggest tomato that I have in this bed is this Amish paste tomato and it's looking really good. So it's giving me me hope for the Amish paste at the end of the garden bed as well. All right, so that's it for those. Those are my, my favorite tomato plants because they're all in that one raised garden bed together. Let me see what else is interesting. I've got some okra just popping up. I'm really excited to start some okra. I've also got some ends of uh, green onions that I've just popped into the ground. And I'm hoping to see them setting out new growth. This is a plant that I haven't put in the ground yet. I just started this from seed. It's called Popolo, and it is supposed to be a heat tolerant um, plant that's very similar to cilantro and it's a Mexican plant, and um, it's my first time growing it, so we'll see how it goes, but it's pretty cute. Look at this guy. Look at him. Doesn't he look so helpful? Like, yes, I won't bolt on you, and you can use me like a cilantro, and I'm cute. Look at that. <laughs> okay, so here's my pole beans. So these pole beans, they're actually um, long noodle beans. So, um, but they're climbing up the poles and escaping onto this trellis. This is a dwarf Siberian kale that is a little worse for wear in the heat, but I have, I've harvested like crazy from it since I first put it in the ground in the spring and I'm just gonna let it stay there and see if it wants to keep on trucking. Um, through the fall and you know I've grown kale before where you know, you come out and you brush the snow off and harvest some kale and so I have uh, high hopes for those uh, lingering kale plants in my garden that I'll be able to continue harvesting from them. Oh look at this guy, we got a friend. Beautiful sunflower. Over here we have some purple beans getting ready to flower. I've got some other beans that are already flowering. These are all my, this is my little bush bean patch. So you can see. And over on the other side, I've got, I've got a cucumber beetle. He needs to go somewhere. Go away, go away cucumber beetle. This is a, um, what is this? This is a cantaloupe. A cantaloupe that I planted over on this side of the trellis. So hopefully this will continue to grow up the trellis. And right next to it, this is a um, Kajari melon. So I've got two Kajari melon plants right here that'll go up this trellis. And then two cantaloupes that'll go up. And the cantaloupe is a little ahead of the melon, but that's okay. And here's that, that bean that is escaping its pole and going up the, the trellis there. Okay, now this, this is a jalapeno that is not very happy. Can you see it? I had this going happily in one of my, um, my crack key containers 
and it was growing so well and it was producing so many jalapenos and then it just suddenly started not being happy and it was such a big plant that I didn't want to just let it die so I took it out of the crack key system and I put it out here in the corner of this bed but it doesn't look like it's gonna pull through but we'll see what happens we'll check back later so here we have some, some scarlet runner beans which are going up the trellis but they have not started flowering yet we have a wee little nasturtiums poking through in there this is my wildest bed I've got so much going on in this bed we have a red veined sorrel just peeking around the corner We've got a lot of sunflowers um, I kind of set vignette my 11 year old daughter and Charles my little newly minted four-year-old loose in the garden with a handful of black oil sunflower seeds and said go ahead and plant them everywhere and they did and so there's there's all these sunflowers popping up through my garden some of them are kind of in the way I'd really rather see my scarlet runner beans there but the sunflower is there and I don't have the heart to take it out so we'll see what happens there's more sunflowers there's basil Here's a jalapeno that I grew here all along and it's doing much better for having not been transplanted. Hi, Mom. Hi, sweetie. So here's some of that lettuce leaf basil and I have picked so much of this, guys. I've made so much pesto already from just these three plants. A tomato? Uh, none of them are ripe yet. But I want one. I know the feeling, my friend. This I need to get plant in the ground, but I'm busy making a video. Ooh, it's a purple kohlrabi <laughs> hiding in there. Actually, I'm going to be cutting those some more sunflowers. Okay, you show me. Can you show me? I want to see it. <gasps> oh, is that a ground cherry? Yep. I don't think that one is ripe. Yes, it is. I think it's green. No, it's not green. Are you going to eat it? Yeah. You just threw the little husk on the ground? Mm-hmm. Mm. All right. So I set up this little trellis with the um, string, string netting across it, and it's wholly inadequate for these cucumbers. So I think these cucumbers are going to end up just flopping all over the place here pretty soon. Let's see it from this side. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, they're gonna start going on the ground here pretty soon. So here's one of these beautiful Swiss chards. This was the first garden bed that we set up and it's just snugged in here in this little narrow part of the garden. But it's got a lot going on. This is where I have my little rain gauge which happily tells me when we get a lot of rain. We've got one wee little zinnia there, some beets, another chard. We've got some more okra started. And I'm trying to keep my sweet potatoes from enveloping the okra. I don't know if that's actually going to work. <laughs> I want my sweet potatoes to stay there and then just like grow off the edge of the, the garden bed. but. It looks like it has a mind of its own and it's gunning for the area where the okra is. Over here we have another wicking container. No, this isn't a wicking container. For some reason I made this container without the wicking aspect. So there's no, there's no uh, fill tube, there's no overflow. This is just a pot with a hole in the bottom of it. But it's still doing fine. I've got a, a yellow squash and a nasturtium and paste tomatoes, Amish paste. And it's growing all the way up here. What do you have? A ground cherry, but it's tiny. A tiny ground cherry? Yeah. Uh-oh. What, what does that mean? That means it's not going to grow anymore. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, so this, 
<laughs> this is a rhubarb that my dear friend gave me a start of this spring and is taken off in this spot so I'm really glad that we that we planted it there. Right behind it is a tree collard that I got from Sequoia in California and it's doing much better having we weathered several um, cabbage beetle attacks. I've also got the purple tree collards here that in the fall I'm going to transplant into bigger pots and bring inside to overwinter um, both the purple tree collards and the, the merit green tree collards. So this is that, I don't know if you guys can go back in time and see some of my original photos of this, but these started as wee little tomato plants here in this crack key system. And this is the one tomato crack key combo outside that has done well for me. The other ones that I've tried have not done well. So these are great. Do you want to peek at the roots? My battery's growing low, so I hope I don't lose everything. But this is a Hungarian heart on the left tomato and a San Marzano on the right. So I guess I do have more than one San Marzano. So let's peek at the roots. So, so can you see that? Isn't that incredible? Actually, I think I need to top that off a little bit, but the I don't want to top it off too much because you want to keep an air gap um, with these upper roots here and where the roots hit the nutrient in the bottom. If you cover all of those roots, with nutrient, then the plant will drown. So we don't want that to happen. Okay, that's it for today. Um, there was, I wasn't able to show you everything, of course, but um, my battery died and it's getting a little late and I'm gonna go in and eat some dinner. But I really enjoyed showing you all the, the little things that I was excited about in my garden and um, I'll see you next time. Okay, bye. Hey Charles, what are you up to? Eating a nap. Eating another nap. What is that? Hearts. Hearts? They look like little hearts. Did mm -hmm. you find that in the garden? No, in um, our neighbor's yard. In the neighbor's yard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's sorrel. Mm -hmm. What does it taste like? Sour. It's sour, but you like it? Mm -hmm. It's probably pretty good for you, huh? Yeah, I'll have a piece. Don't just tear it in part. It is like a little heart. Mm -hmm.